I just started playing around with HP tuners on my Gen 3 LS6 on my Corvette. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video because I haven't really seen any content out there covering this, but um, this is gonna be a quick tutorial on how to make a pops and bangs slash burble tune. Um, there's only a couple settings that you have to change from what I've seen. Uh, it may or may not work for you, but uh, it worked really well for my car. Uh, I, I do have stock cats and exhausts on my car, and I was able to actually make it sound almost like gunshots. So you might want to be careful with some of the settings here. I'll go over um, what I found uh, works for me. I think if you actually don't have cats, you could probably shoot flames with this. I'll show you a couple of spots in the map too where you can add in some fueling to get a more dramatic effect. The other thing I'm gonna cover in this video, it's been covered in other videos, uh, but I wanted to make a quick, concise one. Um, you can do a ghost cam, uh, fake cam. I don't know really why you'd wanna do this. Sounds like an artificial cam. I've had cars with real like tick stage three performance cam and it's nothing like the real thing. Um, kinda cool, I guess, to play around with. It almost sounds like idle hunting. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you the settings for that as well. Okay, so there's probably a million different ways to do the burbles. Um, I've seen people come in here in the uh, DEFCO tables and turn this on. I tried to do that and it really had no effect on my car. Maybe it wasn't uh, being enabled because I have certain parameters set, um, but I was messing around with that for a long time and it didn't really do anything. The main thing is if you wanna get burbles or pops and bangs, you have to one, retard the timing and two, make sure you have unburnt fuel. So what I ended up doing, I started off in the um, high octane um, spark table here. And I started messing around with uh, some of the values over like 3000 RPM here in low mass airflow. So I started off in this section, I you know, I went negative 10, whatever. And then I found out that wasn't really doing anything in the logs, I was checking it. And I found that uh, your min TPS, at least on my car, is set um, pretty low. So that means that this table here won't kick in until your throttle position is over this percentage. So just keep that in mind. Um, mine is set super low, obviously. Um, so there is another spark table that kicks in when your minimum TPS is below this. Okay, so it's gonna be your idle spark advance uh, in drive and in park. My, my car is a manual, so I just copied the settings for both. So what I ended up doing was I came in here in the same spot. I wanted my burbles to only come in past like 3000 RPM. I think it's kind of ridiculous cars that like are going through parking lots and at really low RPMs and it's popping. So I only have mine set up here. I started off actually really aggressive at like negative 10 degrees and that literally sounded like gunshots. I'm sure if I didn't have cats, it would start shooting flames. So I went negative five, I went uh, positive five, wasn't too dramatic. So I set it on, uh, settled on zero degrees. So just make sure whatever RPM you want to kick in at, just make sure you set uh, those values to either negative or, or zero timing. That'll retard the timing just on your deceleration. And for your car, um, if you have an automatic, you may want to log a little bit to see what RPM and what mass airflow your cells are hitting um, before you modify this, because uh, you could cause some weird drivability issues. So I, I copied the same thing to the in park because I want to be able to have burbles when I just stand still and rev the motor. So I copied the same thing over. Then I found out that wasn't working. So the next thing I had to do was come in here to minimum spark. So if you read down there, it says the minimum spark advance allowed during any spark retard event. So that is the minimum amount. So mine was initially set, I think to uh, 10 degrees. Uh, so whatever you're gonna set in these other tables, you also have to set this in the same cells here. So 
in my case I did zero degrees, but if you're going negative 10, negative 15, you wanna shoot flames, you would end up changing this to that same value so you can actually get down to that negative timing. My car had enough fuel on the overrun that when I lifted off the gas, um, it created a popping. You may have to end up adding a little bit of fuel on your deceleration. So what you're gonna have to do is come into airflow uh, and you wanna look at first your dynamic airflow here to see um, if you're in speed density and editing the VE table or you need to edit your math settings. So mine cuts over at 4,000 RPM. So I would be mainly working with uh, the math table. Um, so I would come in here and uh, come into math calibration and just add wherever that deceleration is. And you're gonna wanna log this. I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. You're gonna wanna come in here and anything below idle uh, you're gonna wanna add like 10, 20% fuel. Depends on if you wanna shoot flames or make the burble more aggressive. But again, I didn't have to t touch any of the stuff on my car. It had plenty of fuel on the overrun to create the, the effect. Same with your main VE table. So again, depending on the dynamic fueling, if you're using VE or MAF, um, you're gonna have to come in here, let's say, um, you know, you want it to kick in at 3,200 RPM again, or above, and low manifold pressure, you would increase these values by like a hmm, couple percent. I wouldn't go too crazy. Subtle changes at a time uh, will get you the effect that you're looking for. Don't, don't go crazy changing stuff. The whole methodology behind the fake cam, ghost cam, is you want that sort of idle surging effect, idle hunting effect. Um, so you can do that on the Gen 3s pretty easily, just messing with the spark advance and then going into idle adaptive spark control and then over speed and under speed. So think of this kind of like ping pong, your, um, your target uh, idle is gonna be in the middle, and if you're over overshooting the idle speed, the motor's gonna kick it way down, and then if you're under speed, it's gonna kick it way up. So it's just gonna keep volleying this back and forth, so you'll get that kind of surging effect like you would with a big cam. So I'll show you um, the amount that I've changed it. So here's my stock table. Um, and here's the values for that. Uh, you might wanna pause this video and copy those, but I ended up settling with the, these settings here. It worked fairly aggressively. Like I said, my, my whole car shook. So that's for the overspeed. Uh, and then for the underspeed. So again, there's my stock values. And then Here's my changed, modified, aggressive values. So essentially um, what this does is you're either adding or subtracting timing to meet that target idle speed. Thanks for watching this video. Um, I did actually spend a lot of time figuring out the pops and bangs and making it sound really nice, like an OEM feature. Um, so I hope you guys like this video. I hope you find it useful. Um, that pops and bangs. I mean, I, I had it so where you get that nice single pop in between shifts, uh, if you shifted kind of lazily enough. And then, um, on a big D cell, you get pops, a couple pops all the way down to like 3000 RPM where you have it set, or you can go more aggressive and start at like 2000 or 1000 and have it pop all the way down. Sounds really good. And again, I think without cats, you could probably shoot flames, especially if you're adding a bunch of fuel in those tables, like I mentioned. So leave a comment if you find it useful. Uh, again, I haven't seen content like this covering this specifically. Um, so thanks for watching.